Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We've seen both diagrammatically and mathematically how a monopolist will set its output and price to maximise profits. Let's just quickly remind you, the monopolist faces the market demand curve. So we've got the market demand curve here, and we'll label that in a second. The monopolist has an ordinary marginal cost curve, which is sloping upwards like that. And the key trick to a monopolist, to working out how a monopolist maximises profits, is to recognise that the monopolist's marginal revenue lies under the price for any quantity. So, given any particular quantity, the demand curve gives you the price, but the marginal revenue will be less than that. And so we can draw the marginal revenue curve on here by this downward sloping red line. So let's just label each of these. So the red line is our marginal revenue curve. The blue line here is the upward sloping marginal cost curve. And the black downward sloping line here is simply our market demand. And remember, for a monopolist, that's also equal to the firm demand because the monopoly is the only supplier in the market. To maximise profits, the monopoly will set the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So it will set this quantity here. That will be QM. And it's going to sell that quantity for the highest possible price that's given by the demand curve. So the profit maximising price for the monopoly is out here at PM. So next, we want to compare this monopoly output with the output that maximises social welfare. How do we do that? Well, we have our marginal cost on here, which is our marginal social cost, because there are no externalities in the simple model that we've got here. But what about our marginal social value curve? Well, we just have to remember that our market demand curve, when there are no externalities, is the same as our social marginal value. So the social welfare maximising quantity will be where social marginal cost and social marginal value intersect. That's going to be our point here. So the optimal production from a social point of view is out here at Q star. So it's clear that the socially optimal quantity, Q star, is greater than the monopoly profit maximising quantity, QM. So we know there's going to be a dead weight loss. How big is that dead weight loss going to be? Well, remember that when we have underproduction, as we do here, compared to the socially optimal quantity, the dead weight loss, the dead weight loss is always compared to the output that maximises social welfare. So it's going to be compared to Q star here. So the dead weight loss is going to be the loss in social value compared to social cost over that underproduction. It's going to be reflected by the difference between the social marginal value curve and the social marginal cost curve for all this area of underproduction by the monopoly. So we can shade it in. It's given by this pink shaded area here. So that's our dead weight loss triangle for the monopoly. If you can't remember exactly why that uh, is the dead weight loss triangle, go back to the earlier presentations where we talk about welfare economics and we talk about dead weight loss, just to remind yourself. So the pink shaded area here is the monopoly dead weight loss. It's an amount of social welfare, of benefit, that society foregoes. Why does society have to forego that when it has a single seller? Well, because the monopolist, when it tries to maximise profits, it wants to pull back quantity so that it can push up the price. And by raising the price and restricting quantity, the monopolist makes more profit than if it kept a lower price and maximised social welfare. So the monopolist wants to restrict output to make more profits. The next obvious question is, well, what are we going to do about it? But that'll have to wait until our next presentation. Thanks for listening.